suppose I have some basis. I've got a B1, I've got a B2, and they define a coordinate system. Then in that coordinate system, I can take some particular vector and I can write a vector in the B coordinate system. So in this particular case, this X vector, it is located at the spot that is two steps along the B1 and minus one step along the B2, which is why we write the X in the B basis as two minus one. Now, I want to imagine I've got a completely different basis. I've got this other basis here. And in this basis, maybe I'll call it the C basis. I've got a C1, a C2. I've got the coordinate system that comes from the C1 and the C2. And I can still write that same green vector there. But this time, when I go and try to write that green vector in terms of the C basis, I get something different. In this case, if I go three times along the C1 and twice up along the C2, then I'm going to get to this green vector. So the green vector is the same in, in both of these. That hasn't changed. What's changed is how I represent this green vector in these two different coordinate systems. Now, the question for this video is the following. How do I make some sort of conversion between these two? Is there some matrix, for example, that I can write, some sort of linear transformation that allows me to take vectors written in the B basis and write them in the C basis? So that's the goal for this video. Our setting is that I've got two different bases. I've got a B basis, which has B1 down to Bn, and I've got a C basis, a C1 down to Cn. And then I can write any vector in terms of the B basis. Because it's a basis that spans anything, any x can be written in this way, some linear combination of the B vectors. All right, so let's focus in on this particular formula. Well, what exactly is going on here? Well, first of all, the coefficients, the s values, those are just going to be the x written in the B basis. Those coefficients, the instruction of how much to stretch each of the different basis vectors, that is what we call the vector x in the B basis. And then what remains, the x and the, the B vectors themselves, I want to note that all of those are written in the standard basis. That is, this x here, it doesn't have any subscript beneath it. This is just a vector in the standard basis, likewise with the b1 all the way down to the bn. All right, so that's understanding this formula. Now let's do the same thing, but for the c basis. If I can take the same x and I can write it in terms of the c basis as well. As in, I've got this x and it's got the two different possible choices for how I might choose to write it. Now, anytime I have a linear combination, you should have an alarm bell going off in your head. When you think of a linear combination, you should think that's just multiplication by a matrix. So the linear combination of the B vectors is just some matrix, the matrix whose columns are the B vectors, multiplied by the coefficients, the S1 down to the Sn. And likewise for the C, that this is just going to be some C matrix, which consists of the columns are going to be the C1 down to the Cn, and multiplied by their coefficients, the T1 down to the Tn. So this is a multiplication of a matrix and a vector on both sides. We can give it a name, and the name we've typically given for it is to call it P sub B and P sub C. So this gives me the P sub B multiplied by the coefficients, multiplied by X and the B basis. And then this one's going to become the P sub C, the matrix whose columns are C, multiplied by the X vector written in the C basis. Now, we can go and clean this up and just look at the important part, which is the matrix version of this. I can now read this off multiple ways. I can convert between the B basis, the standard basis, and the C basis. I can convert between all three of them. So for example, I can go and write this one, which is writing the X values in the C basis. Well, what is it? It's a matrix multiplication. I have to multiply by the inverse. I've, I've got to take the, the PC and I've got to move it over. And I can do this because the C vectors, they're literally independent as they're a basis. So these n literally independent vectors, that's going to be an invertible matrix. So indeed you can invert it and you can multiply it out, and you could do it the other way too. I can write the xb as a product. It can be written as the x and the c basis times this pc matrix that turns into the standard basis and then multiplied by the inverse of the p sub b matrix. So these are the formulas for how to convert between two different non-standard bases. All right, let's see how this works algebraically in example, then we're gonna connect it back geometrically. Here I've given explicit examples for my B and my C bases. Then for each of these, I get a P matrix. I get a P sub B and I get a P sub C and they're just taking the B vectors and putting them into the P sub B, taking the C vectors, putting in the P sub C as columns. 
I can then go and write out this particular product, the PC inverse PB. Just have to take my inverse of the C matrix, I know my inverse trick for two by two matrices, and I can multiply that on the left to the PB, and I get this matrix here. All right, so that's my change of basis matrix. And then if I give you a specific example, like XB being say two minus one, that's what we saw at the beginning of the video, then to get XC out of it, all I have to do is to multiply by this change of basis matrix, and it just gives me the value, it gives me three, two. All right, so geometrically what, what happened, we, we saw this picture before where I've got these two different basis vectors. First of all, I've got the B1 and the B2, and I've written X in the B basis. And what I'm interested in doing is figuring out what X is the C basis was. And we sort of visually thought it was gonna be good as three, two, but now we know how to connect them. To go from the one to the other, I'm just gonna go and multiply by that particular matrix, this change of basis matrix, the one, one, minus one, zero. Now I wanna show you one more way that I can Think of this, I can think of this change of basis matrix. So let me go and write up this product here. So this is the P inverse C times PB that we've seen. Now, what I'm doing in this particular formula is I'm saying, look, PB is a matrix. It's the matrix whose columns are all the B vectors. So I'm just gonna rewrite it in that way as this, this PC inverse multiplied. I explicitly write out that the PB is just this matrix whose columns are B. Then the way that matrix multiplication worked is that this was going to be the matrix whose columns were PC inverse multiplied to each of the columns in turn. In other words, this is going to be PC inverse times the B1 all the way down to PC inverse times the BN. But this we can recognize. We know what the PC inverse does. That takes a vector written in the standard basis and converts it into the C basis. So when I look at PC inverse of B1, that's just writing B1 in the C basis, and the same all the way along the line. So what I really just get is this is just the matrix whose columns were the B vectors, but the B vectors written in the C basis. All right, to summarize what's going on here, I can say that this change of basis matrix is defined in this way. It's defined to be the matrix whose columns are the B vectors written in the C basis. And then I can transform from X written in the B basis to X written in the C basis by multiplication by this change of basis matrix. Now, next video, I wanna go and really look at what this is geometrically, but not just geometrically as seen in this video, I want to see a dynamic picture of what exactly is going on, how to interpret change of basis as a composition of multiple different transformations.